All right. Where to next? Guess we need to talk to Nud, right? He sips his tea quietly. Was there something else? Uh, tell me about your time as a mercenary. Nud tilts his head back and drums his fingers on his cup. Well, in my youth, I toured with the various mercenary companies in the Apostatic Union Heartland. There's a tale or two there. I ended up with the Dark Stars here in Quill, a name I'm sure you've heard of. But lately, I've been freelancing in these Oneric Isles, taking on all sorts of jobs before settling in with Dwin here. Of all the realms I've been to, these isles host some of the strangest. He narrows his eyes. Oh, is that so? You're looking for Dark Star mercenaries? Well, your motives better be pretty fucking congenial, because it's no secret that I'm a former Dark Star merc myself. Of course, I haven't sailed with them in years. I left after the mutiny. Once it became clear that Vela's ambitions, once so intoxicating, were likely to get us all killed. He clears his throat. Well, out with it then. Exactly who are you looking for? Uh, tell me about Vela Callus. He chuckles heartily. Ah, oh, now that's a good one. You're just going to stride up to the boss lady herself and claim that union bounty, are you? Now, don't get me wrong. I never really knew the woman. I was too low ranked to be clinking my tankard with her. But I've been privy to some of her deeds, and well, it's to say you don't ever want to cross swords with Vela Callus. As for where she's gone, I haven't the slightest idea, and I wouldn't tell you if I did. That woman has plans in motion that I couldn't begin to comprehend, and I won't be found complicit in trying to thwart her efforts for the sake of my own neck. I'm meeting with Jack Basalt. Ah, uh, good old Jack, he smirks. In the Union, they still call him the shame of the Navy after he abandoned his rank and station to join Vela's merry band. In battle, that man was a demon. When his voice bellowed across the deck of a skyship, sword raised high, you made sure to heed it. But below decks, he always found time to share a drink with those under his command, learning their names or troubles. Not every merc captain does that. Of course, I don't know if that was thanks to a kind heart or his weakness for the strong stuff. Let me guess you're meeting him in a pub, right? He grins. It's enough about Dark Stars. Alright, so we already talked to him. Let's talk to... The Weight Man. Oh, welcome back. What can old Colwick do for you? Found I found evidence of god worship in Pwill. He leans in close. Oh yeah, tell me then, why don't you? I saw someone dressed in robes lurking around at night. Hmm, that sure is mighty suspicious, but on its own it can't do naught with this type of evidence. You can try and find where they're going. If they really were a Wiccan, there'd be some sort of ritual, maybe. Signs of someone trying to rekindle the contract. There were occult instruments in the caverns below Pwill. For a moment, he merely stares past you, lost in thought. This can only mean one thing. Someone's conducting rituals around Angwin's corpse. That means they're trying to reopen the blood contract. But buried in those closets was a terrible cost, no less than human sacrifice. Here, take this key. It'll unlock the upper chamber in the sacred tomb to the west. There's no doubt in my mind someone's being taken to the sacred tomb to be metabolized, as per the contract terms. You gotta go there and save them. Did you say metabolized? In the old days, there were sacred tombs all over Pwill. Each one would spawn a whole forest of scry shrooms, but only if they'd recently metabolized a human. I ain't sure about the scry shrooms' use. I ain't sure if the scry shrooms used part of the human body to achieve their effect, or whether it was all part of Anguin's divine mockery, but I know the scry shrooms used to be more potent in the old days. Now there's only one sacred shroom left, deep in the mushroom forest to the west. All the others shriveled up and died when we stopped feeding them flesh. How do I get into this mushroom? Well, you need to travel through the mushroom forest. You can't miss the shroom itself. It's probably the biggest mushroom you've ever seen. On account of it being used by the Wiccans in the past, there's doors and paths leading up and around the shroom itself. Main doors will lead you through the central stem, but there might be a hole in the host of nasty monsters waiting to tear you a new one. So you might try looking for a way around the back. It'll probably be locked up tight, but you might have less of a fight on your hands that way. All right. Uh, yeah. We'll go back to the shroom then. I don't remember exactly where it is. Where am I headed? <sighs> it's currently very late at night. I'm pretty sleepy. I've had a kind of rough day. Things things have been very busy for me lately, and things have very been very tense at work. Not towards me specifically, but just like ambiently. And I've also just not been really loving the internet lately. I just kind of want to be away from it all. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... There's no collision on that gate. Interesting. Uh, 
every couple of years, I just feel like being offline. Like, election season just kind of makes everything ambiently worse. I'm not even talking just politically. I just think that people's tensions are very riled up. And for good reason. But uh, it's a high-stress time. And I went through a very high-stress time this past month. Buying my house and moving in and dealing with more layoffs at my company, which is very annoying. I survived them, thankfully. Like, I wasn't laid off, but lots of people I know were, and that was a pain to deal with. And then, uh, this is like the sixth layoff in the past year that I've gotten through, so it's like really stressful. And I always feel like I'm on the chopping block, even though I'm not. And so things with tensions just so high, I just always feel like people are just ready to start a fight at all times. And I find it just exhausting. And like, I'm guilty of that too, right? Like, you see someone being dumb on the internet, you want to tell them, stop being dumb, think about things this way, it might open your mind. But like, no one on the internet wants to listen, <laughs> obviously, so it's kind of like a, a folly of a premise to begin with. And like, I don't know. Every once in a while, I just get that feeling of like, what if, what if we all just like lived in our bunker for a year, you know? Like, what if we all just took a year off, decided to pack it up, live in solitude, read a book, that sort of thing. I'm not going anywhere or anything like that. I'm not planning on, like, getting rid of the channel or anything, but it's more of a, uh, a, like, a passing fantasy that you have. Not even of the channel, I mean, of just, like, I'm going to take a break from communicating with people outside of very bespoke circumstances. Because, in a way, like, you know, your time is your energy, right? And... Especially as tensions get raised, people spend their time and their energy on things that, like, truly aren't bettering the causes that they want to better, but also aren't worsening <laughs> things. It's truly just wasting their time and making them feel terrible. And, they, you know, this doesn't have anything to do with, uh, you know, like, I'm not saying, like, actual causes, like you know, like, political fundraising or anything like that, or, like, activism. I just mean, like, in general, you'll see people online, as tensions rise, just be like, F fuck you, this anime is the best anime. I, I love this one, and if you like this celebrity, this voice actor, you're condoning their bad behavior that I dug up on their... I spent eight hours digging up on their Twitter uh, from 12 years ago, and how could you... And I just always think about that, like, man, spending that much time on this would be truly, it's like such a waste. Such a waste when I should be doing other things. And like, you know, I try my best not to get into annoying arguments like that, but like, even just witnessing them in my periphery is like very exhausting. I just find it all a little bit extra. And sometimes you just want to get away. You just want to go into your cave and record pre-recorded Let's Plays instead of streaming. Because when you stream, you have to engage with people. And when you do pre-recorded Let's Plays, those people don't exist for six months. But the good news is, uh, I have been able to play a lot of very good games this month. And a lot of stuff that people on the channel won't even see for a while, which is fun. And I made a lot of progress on the Zone of the Enders review. Which kind of ballooned in scope. As I realized I needed to cover the anime as well. Which is fine. Uh, it's not a very good anime. It's kind of garbage, actually. But... The OVA is okay. The the animated series is really bad, but just going over that and like working on this is that room I was just in, wasn't it? It is. Um, 
but yeah, like going going over all that is just taking time, and it's it is making me a little sleepy. Ooh, nice, lucky me. Uh, it is making me a little bit sleepy because I'm having to spend so much effort on it. But it'll get done eventually. We'll make it through. We'll get there. The nauseating stench of bile engulfs the flesh chamber before you a huge digestional tract pulsates and throbs with corrosive acid. It would seem as though this mushroom has organs. Lud rides behind the digestive membrane, clearly in agony. When he sees you, he looks shocked. You! We need to get you out of there. Er, who did this to you? Nobody! A look of determination sees his Lud. Everyone assumes I'm just some stupid kid, just the mayor's idiot son. They don't take me seriously, but now I can show I'm worth something. I can save the village all by myself. I found the old Wiccan contract right, stashed in my mother's basement. I convinced Amir to help me set it up, but it was me who whispered to Ingwin and felt his reply echo through my bones. I admire your guts, at least. Quill is dying, everyone says so. Since Ingwin was killed, the soil's drying up. In another generation, there will be nothing left. This is the only way to save the village. Some towns dry up. It's just the way it is. That's easy for you to say, not being from here. Pull is the only place I've ever known. I won't survive anywhere else. Charm, you don't know that. The Skyrims are full of impossible places beyond your wildest dreams. I don't care about other places. I have only one home, and it's Pull. So you really want to do this knowing that you'll die? No. Enough of this. Cut him loose. Uh, so you really want to do this knowing that you'll die? I've never been so sure of anything in my life. I want to save the village. I want Pull to live on even if I have to die. Hmm. Still, I can't let you do this. The boy shivers and says nothing. Enough of this. You slice through the membrane and a torrent of foul smelling acid pours forth. Lud slides out of the muck, coughing and sputtering. You had no right, he shivers. The first thing I've done truly by myself and you've ruined it. You had no right. I just like ruining people's plans. The boy shivers and says nothing. <laughs> All right, well. Finished up that quest. Uh, we are a contract person, right? We're, we do jobs. We currently work for the Apostatic Union, so... This is what they're paying us for. We may as well do it, right? Oop. Wasted a potion by accident when I went to sheath my sword. This game is fantastic. One of the other things I've been thinking about lately is changing my, my computer setup. I'm slowly working on switching to Linux, as I've mentioned a few times on stream and in other playthroughs. Um, and it's going well. I'm getting everything set up okay. Right now, even even now for this recording, I'm testing a completely different audio format to see uh, see how good this audio turns out. I don't know how huge these files are going to be because I'm recording with PCM audio instead of AAC, but we'll see. Um, maybe it will be good quality, and that would be great. Uh, just more ways for me to update my workflow, I guess, which is always kind of fun. Um, I like that kind of tinkering aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff I want to do, but I want to update my setup really bad. I would really like to, um, damn it. I would really like to switch to having a 4K OLED as a monitor. There is a really nice 240Hz 4K OLED that I was thinking of buying. Um, it's pretty expensive, but I was thinking about it just to kind of better my my gaming experience. But the thing is, ugh, fuck, I wasted my last potion. I need to switch that hotkey really bad. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about switching over and, and updating my 
my setup because even though I love this ultra wide, like it isn't great for video editing and it's not great for my work workflow. So there is some degree of change that I could facilitate that might be really nice. I've been looking into different types of setups as well, including um, including maybe a setup that I could uh, mount my ultra wide like either below or directly above my 4K monitor or a 4K monitor or a 4K TV. I I'm really thinking about switching to a TV, actually, a 42 inch TV, because I think that would be very fun. Uh, large format gaming. It also might help alleviate my, my some of the neck strain that I feel because I kind of I'm really short <laughs> and my desk is also short uh, but my m It doesn't go low enough for me to put my feet flat on the ground even with my chair <laughs> like to have my chair ergonomically where it needs to be so I uh, unfortunately have to kind of make my chair big enough that my arms are flat on the desk when I'm using it, which means my feet don't touch the ground. But it also means uh, because I can't adjust my monitors to be any taller than they are, my monitors are, uh, I kind of have to look weirdly down at them at an angle um, just a little bit, and it's very uncomfortable. So I've been thinking of maybe switching to a TV to help alleviate that so that I have a little bit more distance above me that I have that I will correct and correct my posture while looking at it. It'll give me more like a center on view and I can push it further back on my desk, which would be nice, but haven't really decided yet. It's just sort of a thought. Uh, I have the cipher charts to hand in. Excellent. Yes, these will do nicely. The detail here is impressive for one of your limited experience. Please take this as recompense. Seems that you've accrued quite the collection of cipher charts, doesn't it? I must admit I'm impressed. Take this. It's a letter of recommendation that would grant you entry into the Erudite Academy. You should speak with the chief cartographer. I'm sure he'll have work for someone like yourself. Nice. All right, so we finished that quest. Now we just need to go back to Pwill. But yeah, I don't know. It's... It's a time of great change in my life. Getting a house really changed my perspective on a lot of things. Just like stuff that I want to do and things I want to facilitate. Like I really want to grow my channel. I really, really want to get more of the video reviews out. And that that will always be a moving target. Um, I'm really aiming for a video a quarter on that for now, just because they take so much time. Um, but I'll speed up eventually as I keep going. I think that will be fine. But there's just so much. <clears throat> so much going on and so much to do. And it's just very, very tiring. It's like a good kind of tiring because I go to bed and I'm sleepy <laughs> and I, I, feel, I feel accomplished and fulfilled in so many ways. But at the same time, it is a lot. And I want to be able to do other things too, and it's really hard. It's really hard to fit everything in. <coughs> right now, I'm doing the uh, Elden Ring first-person playthrough on streams, and I kind of, kind of sad about that because Shadow of the Erd Tree is coming out, and I definitely won't be at Shadow of the Erd Tree by the t like for YouTube to air at that time. So, kind of. A bummer but is what it is ah oh, welcome back what can old Colvic do for you I visited the sacred tomb and discovered what's going on was I right was there a sacrifice taking place it was Lud he tried to sacrifice himself but I managed to talk him down Colvic gasps oh that foolish boy the harvest ain't worth Anguin's blood price and I ain't and I always taught him that but it looks like you stopped him, newcomer, and for that you have my sincerest thanks. If not, it's not much, but just as I promised. Here, take this Union passport. It'll get you through the Great Gate Bridge of the South leading to Hallowshire. Be careful down there, mind. If you think Pwill's harvests are bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hallowshire's in the midst of an awful famine, and it seems the townsfolk and our poor Lud have had certain ideas in common. Part of part of my my kind of current issue with wanting to switch over to a 4k monitor that was just one i don't record in 4k that would be massive i don't stream in 4k because that would be incredibly difficult and um we already did this uh yep all right i already heard that 
Um, you know, and if I want to stream in 4K, I, I don't even think that's possible for me. I don't think I have the, the upload for that. Um, and recording in 4K, I just don't have the hard drive space. Let's see, Hallowshire, Militant Agriculture, Farmer, Southeast, yes, you disable it either with violence or through less direct means. I really want to figure out how to do this. Let's see. All right, so Mutant Agriculture is just the only other choice. Is Lud down here now? There was Lud down here? Yeah, Lud was down here. This was them, so I, I managed to avoid talking to him and just didn't get his story. That's a bummer. That's okay, though. No, I drank the potion when I was trying to switch. I have my use key and my switch key so close to each other because of the way that uh, that works, <laughs> the way it's bound. All right, I got to figure out how to disable this thing. So we found out that it was a lie. That was the first thing. How do we how do we destroy it? All right, that doesn't work. I'm very curious how we're meant to to destroy this thing. All right, we killed all of the the rotten onions. Okay. It's just a back door. here huh okay that doesn't work what do I need to do that how do we interact with you and get you to die like what are we gonna do here is there another lore thing to interact with We interacted with a few things in here, but like what else could we need to interact with? Doesn't really seem like there's anything here to touch. None of this stuff is lore. We did interact with some things that were lore so far. Is there another lore to touch? I don't think so. What's in here? I think the lore was just to open up this room. Which just still leaves me with the question of like, what am I supposed to do to deactivate this thing? Because I have no idea. The farmer doesn't seem to notice either. 
Or he doesn't seem to care that it's fake. I can't, there's no dialogue option to speak to him about it. So we're getting attacked. Gotta get going. Huh. Yeah, maybe we have to go back to Quill and talk to the airship company. Or maybe I have to go up there somehow and do something up there that turns it off. That's very possible. That's Hallowshire though, isn't it? Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Very strange, very peculiar. I am enjoying this game. I definitely would have like truly fallen in love with this as a kid. If I played this on my grandma's 2000 gateway, like, it would have blown my mind. Alright, let's speak to her up here. You must purchase an airship deed before you can upgrade it. Oh, I don't have an airship. So I must have to get an airship to shoot the thing down. The woman casts you an indifferent gaze. Greetings, traveler. Welcome to the... She yawns and rubs her temples. The Pwill Port of the Winged Merchants Guild. I'm the local harbor master. Can I help you? What does the guild do here in Pwill? She takes a sharp intake of breath as, in, uh, as if the question was a particularly confounding riddle. Well, we oversee the transfer of goods, impose tariffs, check on contraband, that sort of thing. Pwill was a pretty quiet place, so we don't get much traffic. Once a week, a merchant ship, usually a cog or a sloop, comes from the hollow town with exports from a union from the union heartlands maybe maybe once in a while we'll get a uh, dow from alice Fara. <sighs> ah, i have hiccups and after we unload their goods what do they want scry shroom always fucking scry shroom i swear if i have to winch one more crate of this stuff how can i get my own airship she smirks what you think we just hand them out to bread-eyed travelers it takes a lot of coin to buy a sailing vessel you know most union merchants only have shares of the ships they use Plus, even if you had a bulging coin purse under those, she vaguely gestures at your clothes. Fine garments you're wearing. These days, you need a writ of permission from the Riovin Port Authority. And trust me, you're not going to find one of those lying around out here in the sticks. Okay, bye. So, yeah, I guess we can't deal with that yet. Um, We did get the Apostatic Union Passport. The woman sits with her eyes closed, a pain expression on her face. Various medallions and necklaces hang around her neck, suggesting she holds some important position here in Pwill. She mutters under her breath, Flames of the flames, we have to douse the flames. Uh, is everything okay? Ah, she looks at you with a frenzied intensity in her gaze. What are you doing? You've got to get out of here. The nautiloid will burn you alive. What are you talking about? Can't you see the monster rising above the flames? Oh, the horror, we have to... She stops mid-sentence and blinks slowly after a moment. She says, nothing's on fire, is it? Nope. Oh, how embarrassing. I'm terribly sorry. You caught me in the middle of a divination. My name's Olwyn, mayor of this humble village of Quill. How do you do? Uh, pleased to meet you. She performs a short, short curtsy. Thank you for your understanding. I've been rather anxious about the future, as you've no doubt observed. You see, I have found myself presented with quite the dilemma. It really, It's really nothing to worry about, so please don't cause a fuss. I have a whole thing quite under control. I was merely indulging in a scry shroom meditation to define what manner of threat this giant monster could pose. And uh, it turns out it's really not much of a problem at all, she gulps. What's this about a giant monster? Oh, it's not so common knowledge, she looks genuinely relieved. I thought the whole town would be talking about it by now. You see, a small mercenary baron has made certain, um, demands. No, I don't mean Vela's dark stars. This lot are much less accomplished. Which makes it all the matter, uh, all the more puzzling how they've got their hands on a giant nautilob. What's a nautilob exactly? She waves her hand dismissively. Just a Skyrim's mollusk that you find around these parts, easily recognizable by their shells, but I had no idea they could get this big. Those mercenary scoundrels... Okay, the rot... Okay, this is a different quest. 
Those mercenary scoundrels are threatening me with their huge nautilob. They claim they'll sack the town if I don't comply with their absurd demands. I really don't want to cause a panic in the town, so I'm at a loss of what to do. But if someone could sneak into their fortress to the southeast and ascertain this not a lot thing has any weakness we could exploit, well, let's just say that person would find themselves firmly in my favor. Let's see what I can do. What if those mercenaries were to disappear? Oh, well, that would be quite the tragedy. The idea of more blood being spilled with Pillion soil is a horrible thought. Her eyes narrow. But of course, it would rather solve the problem here, wouldn't it? And with so little funds to hire guards, it would be awfully hard to catch a perpetrator of such a crime. She smiles suddenly. Oh, but pay me no mind. I'm merely thinking out loud. Now, is there anything else? Those mercenaries say you never paid them. Well, I never paid them the full amount, no, but that's because they made a ghastly mess of the whole thing. I hired them to clear out a few nautilobs from the surrounding forest. They managed to kill a measly three and then had to retreat because one of their men tripped and fell on his own spear. I mean, what kind of idiots are they? Uh, about this giant nautilob. Oh, yes, I'm presuming it's still there. Uh, look, just tell me what you need. Those mercenary scoundrels are threatening me with their huge nautilob. They claim they'll sack the town if I don't comply with their absurd demands. I really don't want to cause a panic around town, so I'm at a loss of what to do. Um, I've already done that. What if those mercenaries were to disappear? What's a nautilob exactly? Actually, never mind. Uh, about your son. Oh, so you're the vigilant stranger who saved my son. I really cannot thank you enough. I don't know what I would have done had he... She sniffs tears in her eyes. I know I can be distracted sometimes, but it's only because I want Poil to be a perfect home for the Lud, for Lud. I suppose I took it too far, considering what he tried to do. Please, I want you to have the most valuable thing I possess. These healing herbs from my garden. There's really nothing more precious than nature's bounty. Hmm. She gave me something I can get elsewhere. I'm looking for the Dark Star mercenaries. Oh, please. If I hear one more word about those bloody Dark Stars, she shakes her head. We've always had our fair share of miscreants attracted to Pwill. Turns out it's not only poets and horticulturists who are attracted to the solitude of the countryside. But when that wretched Vela Callis moved in with her cohorts, you wouldn't believe the type of scoundrels we had prancing up and down our idyllic cobbled streets. She sighs. Now on top of everything else, we have the Inquisition raid in the island. So I'm sorry, but if you have dealings with those ruffians, I really can't help you. Maybe you have a better luck with someone else around town. I know Nud has done some jobs for them. You can usually find him in the local shop. Why don't you try bothering mm, asking him about it? Questions about this town. I suppose, Mayor, I'm of course exhaustively busy, but she mumbles to herself. I suppose I can postpone my meditative dance until later. Did you know there was a mercenary band in the old fort? Well, I wouldn't be much of a mayor if I didn't know that, would I? Under union law, mercenaries are perfectly legal organizations. The trouble is that in peacetime, they tend to lean towards more illicit pursuits. Being so far from the capital city of Riova, Pools attracted numerous types of ruffians over the years. They never caused too much trouble, at least until Vela's Dark Star mercenaries moved in. You'd never have guessed they were once the most respected spell swords in the Union, based on their recent behavior. I'm sure you've noticed all the ruckus coming from the old God War Fortress. The apostatic Union has finally had enough, you see. It's about time they taught that Vela a lesson, but all those explosions are really disrupting my morning routine. You think any Dark Stars could be hiding in Pwill? Well, we're quite used to the odd group stumbling into town for a drink or ten, but beyond that I wouldn't really have the slightest clue. Alright. You seem quite smitten with this hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic tea. She scrunches her nose. Pwill's scry stream is not merely hallucinogenic. It submerges one's consciousness into the temporal current. In other words, it allows you to see the future. Sounds potent. Oh, it's extremely potent. The visions are such intensity that one can be forgiven for thinking they're really occurring, though it's important to interpret such visions with a pinch of caution. You see, not everything the scry streams predict will come to pass. The cosmos is a web of infinite possibilities, and the future is not struck in, stru st uh, struck in stone. The user's hopes and fears can also taint the vision in, uh, rare cases. It's also known to cause, she clears her throat and quickly mumbles the words, fainting, nausea, delusions of grandeur, extreme anxiety, abnormal abnormally bushy eyebrows, independently sentient limbs, and death. But all the more reason why we should use the, a scry shroom responsibly, yes? And they really are quite good for digestion. What's the story of this place? Opul is a long and compelling history. Did you know that in all of the apostatic union, we have won by far the most agricultural competitions for the quality of our produce? Or that, those small, our scry shroom farms can rival the orchards of Bion and Yield? She waves a hand. Oh, and there's the drama of Pul's terrible god who was killed by his own worshippers, but it's all before my time, so you'd have to ask Waymaster Kulvik about that, I'm afraid. You see, I became mayor of this place somewhat by accident. I was passing through just as the villagers were electing a new mayor, for the last one had been suddenly, if not unexpectedly, imprisoned on extortion charges. The mayoral contest was one, by, uh, was one of horticulture. I cultivated a small garden of hymnal hydrangeas that could sing in three octaves, and that was that. Okay, I get the picture. Was there anything else? Thanks for the info. She sighs. Was there anything else? Farewell. All right, let's talk to her again, because I finished the quest. 
You're back. I suppose I have a few moments to talk about this giant not a lob. What exactly do you need? Okay. I have to probably go back and trigger the thing so the quest can progress. Oh, it's you. I still can't forgive you for interrupting the digestion, but seeing how relieved my mother was to have me back, I suppose I wasn't as worthless as I thought. I don't know what will happen to Pwill. It makes me sad to think of not being here in the future, but maybe we can find somewhere else to call home. All right, so I'm going to have to go all the way freaking back to the giant Nautilob. And then read the note again, and hopefully that will trigger the quest so that I can progress. <laughs> because I would really like to, to close that off the list. I'm gonna be bummed if that quest is bugged because I did it in the wrong order. I saved her son before meeting her. I talked to the scry shroom guy before meeting her. Is uh, I did her quest entirely backwards. <laughs> it's 100% clear that that is what happened. Uh, this is the way, right? No, it's not the right way. It's fine, though. I mean, it will get me down. It's just not the place I wanted to go to. <sighs> and maybe now, having killed all the people, once I go back in and interact, it will... Uh, correctly do this quest. All right. Now we just have to go up. Read the note. Quest updated. Come on. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> I wish it just let you. There we go. So then what is the beast that is attacking the farmer? If not... The Nautilob. Yay, a lock pick. Oop. Nothing in here. Okay. Oop. Throwing knife. Okay, we'll take it. Oh, fuck. There you go. I'm okay. Uh, I should be using spells more often. That's just a no brainer. can report back to her and maybe get a quest reward. That'd be sick. Uh, do I have any levels? Nope. If she gives me a quest reward with experience, though, maybe that will level us. I'm surprised charm is a pretty effective... pretty effective option. We should probably kit for it, but I want to kit up level up, or lockpick as well, guile.
You're back, she sighs. I suppose I have a few moments to talk. You won't have to worry about the giant Nautilob anymore. Oh, really? Why, what is, why, this is splendid news. Please tell me the details. The Nautilob was an illusion, nothing more. Oh, oh my, really? I can't believe I didn't think of that. So the town is saved? We're not going to burn alive? Hurrah! Anyway, please take this reward along with my heartfelt thanks. You've done Pula fine service today. Glorious treasure. Embraced a delusion. Okay. Guile. What is glorious treasure? Peculiar bunch of humanoid creatures. Goblins are native to the Neric Isles. They are often seen wearing crafted wooden masks, attire that is said to be worn in the act of penitence for some past misdeed. They live in harmony with the forest and are especially fond of giant moths found there. Interesting. Sure, put that on. Um, these are belts. I've got no armor, don't have any other weapons besides those ones. Militant agriculture. Farmer in the southeast of Pill whose crops have been raided by the rogue machine. He's asked you to disable it. Okay, we'll go try and do that one. Real quick, what is glorious treasure? Okay, wait, hold on. Make the, any collector perspire at the site could be sold for a small fortune. Use this item. This is a remarkable treasure. Okay. How do I sell? We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait to deal with that. Um, all right, let's head back to the farm. And then see if we can find the... The thing that I guess I didn't realize was a machine. Okay, I just have to find his crops, I guess. So where are his crops? <laughs> hiccup. Wow. Very strong hiccup. So he's a farmer. Where are his crops? Is it over there? Or they're right here. Do I need to wait until night? It's not that. These are his crops. What do we need to do? What's out here terrorizing his crops? Early morning, maybe? Let's look for the quest. I'm in a farmer in Southeast of Will. He has asked you to disable it uh, by a rogue machine. I just don't know where the rogue machine is. Where would it be? Is it back behind the house right now? Is it back up here? I mean, yeah, I guess we can look for it. I'm just very confused. There it is. Is that it? No. There we go. Device crackles with a distinct pulse of cipher magic. Its ocular skull registers your presence, and a mechanical quill scratches out the following lines. Rejoice, downtrodden thrall of the defeatist powers. Thou standest now within a fiefdom of Machinus Rex. Proclamation. This honorable vassal governs the protocols of its indentured auto serfs. Decrying census. Number of inactive auto serfs 253. Number of active auto serfs 1. Current labor protocol militant agriculture. Dost thou have a query? I want to change the labor protocols. Judgment. Alteration protocol is only permitted by order of Machinus Rex or its appointed deputies by the ordained discretion of this vassal. Therefore, query, what is thine argument? Your surf is causing havoc and will likely be destroyed unless you tell it to calm down. 
Contemplating canon. Disputation. A saying validity. Thine argument is worthy. Therefore, edict. Auto self serve labor protocol is hereby revised. Current labor protocol. Benevolent agriculture. All hail its majestic Magnus Rex, the Clockwork King. All right. Okay, that was like one of those weird things that was difficult for me to figure out at first, but I guess it's fine. Let's go talk to him, turn in the quest, and then I guess we're pretty much done with the quest. Oh, what is going on here? The machine continues with its agricultural duties, indifferent to your presence. I'm sorry if I'm a bit distracted, Traveler. That blasted mech from the Clockwork Kingdom is still ravaging my crops. I've dealt with the machine that's been bothering you. His eyes open wide. You have? And there was me thinking you'd hacked it and you'd be hacked into tiny pieces. He chuckles. So tell me, how'd you do it? I changed its protocols. It should tend to your farm peacefully now. He seems taken aback. You changed its what now? So you mean it's friendly all of a sudden? Strokes his chin. Hmm, if this works and that machine proves even half as useful as I heard they were, why? I'll be the richest room tender imp will. He breaks into a beaming grin. Maybe even Hallowshire. Thank you, stranger. Truly. Uh, I have here an old family heirloom that should be worth a few bob to the traders in Hallowtown. Please take it. You've earned it. Thank you. All right. We've, uh, I think we've done everything we can. It's time to set out for Hallowshire. Yippee.